Okay, it's 5.30. Um, I'd like to call to order the uh, public works meeting for um, May 26th, 2020. I'm going to uh, make a, go for a roll call, and I can't see everybody because um, there's only a few that are showing pictures. So, um, Alder Sovagio. Here. Yeah, I know I messed it up again. Uh, Alder Sorensen. Here. All right. And, oh, here we go. And who else do we have? Um, Alder Phillips. Here. Perfect. Here. And let's see. We have Thomas Cameron. And who else do we have? I have a TTT and a CO and a CP. Which one are you? TTT? Okay, TTT. Pardon? How about caller one? Who's caller one? Steve Johnson is here. All right, thank you, Steve. And Alder Decker? Excellent. All right. If you uh, would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sorry, my mask slipped. All right. Um, I don't know if introduction of the committee members is necessary. We do have... Director Beebel on site and Jason Russell, Jason from Public Works and Ryan from Public Works. Um, so we'll move to 2.1, approval of the minutes from May 12th, 2020. Looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any questions on, on the minutes from uh, May 12th? Hearing none, all in, uh, um, Marcus? Alderperson Savaglio votes yes. Thank you. Alder Sorensen? Aye. Alder Phillips? Aye. Alder Decker? Aye. And I vote aye, chair votes aye. Motion approved. All right, we move to 3.1, uh, GO 5 uh, May 18th, 2020, document 6.1, ordinance repealing and recreating section 26907 of article eight, division four of chapter 26 in municipal code entitled sewer and water services. My understanding is this is on hold. Um, does anybody need to talk about this? Thomas Cameron, do you, would you like to say something? I can. Um, this has been a little bit of a moving target. At one point, uh, we were led to believe that the city needed to approve it uh, before it went to PSC uh, at the state, and uh, PSC has, we'll say, clarified that uh, they would prefer to pass it uh, or approve it first and then have it go back to uh, the city to essentially take action based on that. So that's why we're, we're holding it at this point. Uh, that change in interpretation happened after it was referred. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Motion to hold. All right. Thank second. You. Thank you for that motion and second. Um, We'll, we'll do the vote. So, Alder Savag, so Marcus. Alderperson Savaglio votes aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alder Sorensen? Aye. Alder Phillips? Aye. Alder, Alderperson Decker? Aye. And chair, chair votes aye, so the motion's on hold. All right, so we'll move to res uh, 3.2 resolution 2420-21, 20 
May 18th, 2020, document 4.3, resolution authorizing an application for an urban non-point source and stormwater program construction grant from the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Director Beeble. Thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This uh, resolution basically is giving us authorization to apply to the Department of Natural Resources for what is called their Urban Nonpoint Source Stormwater Program Construction Grant. It has a maximum award of about 100, uh, of 150,000, and uh, the total project cost. What we're looking to apply this towards is the reconstruction or rebuilding of the pond that is located at 29th and Gailey. That was mainly put in for flood control at the time and uh, after the 98 flood. And with that pond, it, it mainly functions as a dry pond and only gets wet in large rain events, such as the one that we just recently had with the six inches of rain. Uh, with that, this program, we are also mandated by the state of Wisconsin to do what is called non-point source pollution control uh, measures. And retention ponds are a great source for reducing pollutants out of the stormwater. So that's why we have many ponds throughout the city. They act for flood control. There's a quantity aspect as well as a, a quality aspect to the ponds. And what they do is they retain the water, the sediments and the pollutants settle to the bottom and ultimately discharge the clear water at a much slower rate than when it came into the pond. That's what we're looking to do at 29th and Geely is to convert this pond to make it wet permanently and function more so as a, as a not only uh, a quantity, but also now provide the water quality. That's what this project would do. So at this point, we have around 400,000 between this year and next year's capital improvements. This would also get us to another 150,000 from the state potentially. We're still a little bit short. The project is roughly worst case scenario, depending upon the soils, it's $900,000 project. So what this resolution also says is, we're gonna apply for the grant, we'll accept the grant only if and when we have the all available funds to enter into contract. So that's the other aspect of this resolution is that Hey, we're going to take the grant, but we're only going to use the grant if we get funding from Common Council to finish the project. Looking for your uh, approval to apply for the grant. Excellent. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. And who moved and who seconded, please? Ryan. Marcus and Ryan. Thank you, gentlemen. Any uh, questions from the committee? I do have a question. It's Marcus from the 5th District, where this uh, retention pond uh, will end up being, or is currently. Um, is it going to be remaining the same size? Because that kind of area right now is rather large. Um, I just want to understand the scope. If, if anything, there may be an expansion to the west, uh, which is school district property, that would act as what we call as a four bay, or a, a pre-treatment uh, bay that would help get what is considered what they call as the first flush of, of stormwater. That's got some of the highest pollutants and that four bay cap captures much of that prior to it entering into the wet basin. So there may be some slight expansion, but again, that school district property, it's not really being developed at this time. And I think the school district, again, maybe opened it this year to some urban farms, uh, some plots mm -hmm. for people to, to farm. But um, we, we've had conversations with the school district in the past about, you know, this potential of needing to expand. Uh, a follow-up question, uh, if it pleases the chair. Go for it. Thank you. Um, is there, uh, are we going to be doing any beautification to that area um, in addition to the, uh, the new management of it, the water? Yes, that, that pond is in dire need of invasives to be cleared out of it. And one of the difficulties is, is, is currently is that we're not able to get equipment in there given the soils are unstable and, and we, they, the, the equipment gets stuck, in other words. So we're looking to reshape, reslope, clean it up um, so it can be better ma maintained long term and into the future. Thank you very much. 
Um, Director Beeble. I have a comment. Yes. Alderperson Phillips here. Just about the way the IFC was written, it seemed a little confusing to me. There was a statement in there that seemed contradictory. Maybe I am misreading it. Um, I'm going to flip over to my other tab so I can read it um, out loud, but it says that um, this is to support the conversion of the pond from a dry pond to a wet pond. And then the next sentence says this conversion from a wet pond to a dry pond will assist the city. So is that not contradictory or am I misreading something? Um, I'm looking at it myself. It says, um, yeah, this conversion from a wet pond, those are reversed. So it should be dry pond to a wet pond in that set, that last sentence. I would agree. But okay. that's, that's what we're really... It, it we it's it's stated above, and I think it's repeated in the staff comments. So correct. Ultimately, we're going to it's it's dry. It will have a wet basin to it, and uh, again, we're going to clean up the evasives that are in the existing dry pond, landscape it, and have the ability to mow it and keep it maintained in the future. Alder Phillips. Thank you. That was a really good catch, um, but the, and the resolution does say dry to wet also, so um, the IFC was the incorrect piece. All right, any additional uh, comments from the committee? All right, hearing none. Um, Marcus? <laughs> I know. I, I'm just giving up on it. <laughs> Alder Sorensen? Aye. Alder Phillips? Aye. <laughs> Alder Decker? Aye. And chair votes aye, motion approves. All right, we'll move forward to 3.3. .3. All right, resolution 2520-21, May 18, 2020, document 4.4 .4 resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the amendment to the agreement between the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan Athletic Club, Inc., regarding lighting improvements at Mary Test Testweed Knopf Field at Wildwood uh, Baseball Park. Thank Correct. you, Mr. Chairman. This is, we, we talked about it at the last meeting. Yep. We kind of had it just as an information. Uh, we had representatives as well on the, on, on, at the meeting from the Sheboygan A's. This basically is the resolution authorizing us to um, basically amend the, the current repayment schedule to have it at interest only because as it's appearing more and more likely that they will not have a season whatsoever. Um, hopefully things change and they can have some, some season and have some activity there, but nevertheless uh, that they're not going to be able to make the whole principal payment that is due this year. So this resolution authorizes us to delay it for a year. Looking for your approval. Perfect, thank you. Second. Okay, thank you for that motion and support. Any additional questions from the committee? Okay, hearing, hearing none. Marcus? Alderperson Slavaglio. Slavaglio. Okay, Alderperson Sorensen? Sorensen votes aye. Thank you. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Decker? Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion approved. All right. We will go to 3.4 uh, resol resolution 2620 21, May 18th, document 4.5, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Mid Lake Softball Organization, Inc. for operation and management of the Wildwood Softball Complex. Director Beeble. Yes, this is a, a renewal of the agreement between Mid Lake Softball uh, Organization as well as the City of Sheboygan for operations of the Wildwood Softball Park. Uh, this, this started in 2015 when they entered into agreement with them. And then we amended the, this agreement 
Um, this agreement also had, it was a one-year agreement that could be extended up to four one-year terms, and it should not, it, basically we're at the point where we need to renew it in 2020. The original agreement had a 20% oh, of gross revenues formula of trying to in, in, in basically make sure that the organization is reinvesting in the park because um, the last operators, um, after some time, failed to, to, to do that. In the 20, because of the 2017 and 18 season, it was difficult to close that out and do an audit and figure out what the revenues are and how much money should be coming to the city. We, we kind of got together at the table and said, okay, let's just make this simple. This is way too complicated. It's going to be figured $10,000. Here's the amount. Put it in the bank. Put it separate in account. And so for those two years, it was $10,000 per year for a total of $20,000. And also for 2019, they needed to do another 10,000 for 2019. So what we're looking to do is with this agreement again is enter into an annual agreement for up to five, five years total with the understanding now that it's just gonna be a $10,000 annual deposit for capital improvements. That money needs to be in a separate bank account and it can't be withdrawn without our authorization to a project that meets true capital needs at the park. It just can't go for, you know, we need to buy some more chips or something that, or, or anything in that. It has to go for improvements, either lighting or something with the fields or infrastructure at the park. So um, we think it's a good agreement. We had a good meeting with them. They understand the, 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 the need for this as well. And again, we would an entertain that uh, our, our recommendation would be to um, to approve this this agreement as it's been amended into the future here. All right, thank you, thank you, uh, Director Beagle. Any questions from the committee? Looking for listening for a motion. Yes. Move to I'll, approve. Okay. Thank you for that motion. Do I hear second. a second? Thank you, Alder Phillips. Phillips. Thank you for that motion and support. Any questions, Alder Decker? I I have two questions. Alder Decker first, please. Um, Push your button. I can't. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. How is this affected for this year? How, are they going to still be required to pay that this year with the, what's going on? Or are they going to be able to, are we, we going to have some kind of a, a break I, I would, for them? I would think if they don't have a season, again, I think this would be something that we would come back and say that the 10,000 that we would typically receive for their season and their their um, funding would probably be waived for the season if they can are unable to have a season and have play. So, and that, that could be a real reality as things are progressing, uh, organized and team level type sports mm -hmm. um, at this stage are still, um, would be not, not, not allowed. Okay. Can I, can I clarify that answer slightly? Um, so I, I agree with uh, Director Beevil. Uh, we actually have addressed that a little bit. Um, at the bottom of page two, um, it talks about if no softball is played, um, then no uh, annual deposit will be required. Um, if some softball is able to be played, um, it still may be appropriate to reduce that deposit, and that authority has been delegated to uh, Director Beeble, uh to work out what that appropriate uh, deposit is. So, Thomas, have you guys defined what some is and, you know, like number, like 50% of play or anything like that? So, I mean, what it really says is if there is no softball at all, then there's, there's obviously no deposit. Um, if softball operations are, uh, the, the phrase used in the agreement is only limited, um, then the parties may agree to reduce the annual deposit. So if it's, um, you know, impacted by a week, potentially no, uh, no adjustment would be appropriate if they're if they're able to get one end of the year uh, tournament in you know in October uh, that might look very different. 
So trying to give maximum flexibility to be to be reasonable. And we, we do have a longstanding relationship with this organization. So I'm not I'm not concerned that parties will forget how to be reasonable as we all go through this together. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? We have a motion and support. Yes, Pardon? I have questions still, two of them. Okay. Go ahead, Marcus. Okay. Uh, first question would be uh, regarding uh, the deposit amount. Um, why isn't it tied to CPI or some other measure that over time would increase? Um, because the cost of improving the field does not go down over time or remain stagnant. Director Beevil. Uh, it's just because it's, it's an easy uh, formula, just a straight fee of 10,000. It gives the softball association group that this is a consistent thing that they can plan for versus an, a variable rate into the future. And they don't spend it every year. So it's, it's accumulating and it's in an interest bearing account, I'm assuming, I would hope. But even still, there's not much interest at a bank to, in, to, in today's world. So uh, again, ease of tracking, a simple straight rate, and uh, as we, we've tried in the past to uh, tie it to like revenues and, and so forth and tracking that, it just became problematic. Any additional questions? Yeah, my uh, second question there would be regards to um, the, the, our ability to safeguard these funds. Uh, from what it sounds like, the association is holding these funds, but how do we make sure that they haven't spent them elsewhere or are indeed holding them? What, what are the safeguards we put in place as a city the, to make sure that money is being used appropriately? They, they cannot spend these funds, if, if, and if they do, that would be a violation of the contract, and then I would have Thomas in his office uh, probably give them notice and it would be terminated. Perfect, thank you. And uh, please understand we have a long relationship with them, so I sincerely don't think that we have to worry about that. Any additional questions from the committee? Hearing none. Marcus? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Decker? Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion approved. Okay, 3.5 resolution 2720-21, May, May 18th, 2020, document 4.6 resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with August Winter, Winter and Sons to rebuild a floating cover on digester number six at the wastewater treatment plant and to make the expenditures related to rebuilding uh, the, the floating cover. Director Beeble. If it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I have Steve Jossert is participating sure. and uh, I would like to defer to Steve and let him explain his Perfect. project that he's working on. Go ahead, Steve, or SJ. Okay, so um, we've got four digesters that we use now that were built with the plant expansion in 1980. Three of them have had the covers rebuilt. The, the fourth one, number six, has a floating cover. Um, back when they rebuilt the other three, this one was a lot more difficult to take down, especially with <clears throat> the turbines and everything they were trying to keep running. So, but it, it, the coating's failing, and we want to get it uh, rebuilt, you know, before it go, gets too far and you got to replace it. So, um, this project basically, it, it takes it, sandblasts it, paints it, reinstalls it, but it's a, it's a pretty big project. A lot of things to execute. Thank you, Steve. Steve, do we have this covered under uh, any of our budgets? Yes, it is, uh, but the, the cost just keeps going higher, and, and so we, we've uh, taken some of the funds from uh, a different project we're going to do with some heat exchangers that we're going to put off a year. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the from the committee? Motion to approve. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Again, any questions from the committee? Hearing none. Marcus? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Wolf votes, um, Chair votes aye. All right, we'll go into 3.6, resolution 28-2021, May 18th, 2020, document 4.6, resolution authorizing the re relocation order in the city of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. Director Beeble. So as, as part of the Aurora Hospital project, they're going to be doing some inter intersection upgrades at Taylor and Union, as well as uh, doing some sanitary sewer work and uh, with the anticipated future traffic and demands with that, that project, as well as eventually the acuity expansion project, we're looking to redo that intersection. Coming east into the intersection of Union Avenue in Georgia, that will be reconstructed as well. At that northeast corner, there's an area of school district property as well as the, the BioLife. So the BioLife is just west of Georgia, but it's in that Taylor and Union and Georgia Avenue area. What we're looking at is we need to bump the right turn lane, which is the northerly most lane that impacts some of the property of BioLife. What this does is allows us to basically uh, condemn if necessary for right-of-way purposes. We have an appraisal, we need, but this is the resolution that authorizes that process so that our appraisal can, our appraiser can give them an offer along with the relocation orders and, and explain the process. Very similar to what we did for like the acuity driveway and that right-of-way needed. This is another uh, aspect of that. So we would need your approval to authorize the relocation order. Thank you, Director Beeble. And this is a common situation anytime an intersection is expanded or updated. I don't want to say expanded, but updated to today's standard. Cor Correct, and, and again, it's, it's, it's areas that just allow us to give the right right away mm -hmm. for proper turning and uh, right. the radiuses to accommodate trucks and other traffic, for instance. And again, even though it says we have the uh, authority to condemn, we, that would be the worst case scenario right. or last case um, effort. Our, our purpose typically is just to go through the process, make sure they're aware of all their rights and their ability to get an, a counter appraisal as well at our cost. So right. this just formalizes the process so the proper steps are in place if things would fail and we'd have to go to that process. Perfect. Okay. So this is just public or uh, no, you're, I'm um, sorry. So I'm looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Again. Thank you for that motion and support. Again, any questions? Hearing none. Marcus? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Decker? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion approved. All right, 3.7. Uh, this will be um, items for discussion and possible action. May 26, 2020, Public Works. Director Beeble, I guess you have a stormwater well, damage update. I just, yeah, I just, it's, I don't have anything to present this evening, but I did want to do a follow up. We did the, the drone footage yep. of the lake shore and talked about where we're at. And then um, last week, we had six inches of rain, uh, high winds coming easterly again against the shore. So, uh, it, it was what was interesting is we did have some slough, sloughing of, of bluffs and failures, mm -hmm. and it wasn't necessarily all caused by wave action. There was some wave action clearly that had had um, caused some erosion. But if you recall during that uh, conversation, groundwater coming through the embankment on, it makes the, the bluff unstable, and sure right. enough, we, you could see some areas where 
where we had uh, sloughing of the lake bank due to that groundwater with six inches of rain. It, it soaked the soil so much and then they, and it starts to move underground. So that's where we've, we really saw some, some pretty significant failures. So what we're doing internally, we're, we're starting to map them from the south side all the way to the north side and get I, areas identified. We know we're gonna have to do some repairs and some stabilization. So we're trying to put in, together an estimate of area as well as uh, what the potential cost could be. Uh, we think that you know at this stage there's there's significant monies that are going to be needed, so it may rise that we could. Uh, we talked at staff staff level today about talking with the governor's office that this could be considered maybe a state of an emergency and get then federal disaster money through FEMA, but it has to come through the state governor's office first. So what we're going to do is put together the package to show all the areas that are damaged what the cost could potentially be if we were able to fix all of these and what the money would be needed to do so. So just to let you know that's where we're at, uh, we'll keep posted and probably at the next meeting we'll be able to present kind of the areas that were damaged. This is what it costs to repair or at least what we're anticipating. We're working with our consultant that is working on the south interceptor uh, because they're also looking at the lake action and what, what they can need to do to prevent erosion of that project. They can help us in some of these other areas as well. Perfect. So I just wanted to give the committee an update. Uh, we've received good feedback on that presentation mm -hmm. and we've actually met with some property owners and, and were able to uh, locate some other issues that they had that maybe the drone couldn't get. So we we are able to actually physically get out at some of these properties. So, so far, I think it's been well received and it's been a good process for all of us. Thank you. Um, I, I have to agree, the, the drone footage was very educational for constituents that actually reached out to me. Um, I think it's interesting when I walk the properties of some of the constituents that do complain, it's, it's interesting to see what a great view they have and when you talk to them and say, you know, gosh, you know, where were all the trees and things like that? They're like, oh, we cut that down so we had a better view. And then now they're complaining there's nothing holding, holding the, the bank. So I think we know we, as we look for ways to fix this, we should also educate them so they understand that by cutting trees down, specifically trees that have the deep root systems that help hold it together, that they're actually creating the problem. And, I also would recommend that we also educate them on the fact that they shouldn't be cutting that portion because they don't own it. So if they want us to fix it, then they should leave it alone. Yeah, I think, I think through this whole process, there's going to be a good open dialogue that we'll be able to do some education, mm -hmm. information, explain. And then also what they can do as property owners to also help protect and help basically alleviate hopefully the situation of, of erosion. So I think it's a, I think we're all in this together where we need to, you know, explain what we're able to do, but we're also limited in our resources in terms of trying to protect with just stone and armament and, and um, because that's, that's really the last, last um, case effort that we would like to do because it is so expensive. Correct, correct. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, we'll move on to 3.8. Um, automated garbage and recycling marketing summary presentation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna have Jason Blaziola, Superintendent of Streets and Sanitation, one of our uh, key, key figures in the automated garbage and recycling program. So I really would Perfect. like to have Jason present this this evening. Sounds great. Thank you, Jason. Good evening. Good evening. So we did work with Sun Graphics in developing our um, web page and social media campaigning, and they also did all of the collateral that went out with the carts um, that individuals received when we delivered the carts, explaining uh, what can be recycled, what shouldn't be recycled, and where to place the cart. So we had them run the numbers for us. And how do I get it to advance? Do I... Top. Oh, 
Where is the computer I pointed to? All right. <laughs> Sorry. So we were going to present this at the last meeting, but I <coughs> these numbers are a little older. But we had about 27,000 users come to the website. Um, so we're nearly 30,000. 75% um, were new users. And when they were there, they were looking at 94,000 different pages. Um, the session is, can be, the page views are how many times you click on a page individually. If I have an own, my session, I can come back and I'm not being counted more as a user. And then I can see multiple pages. So there's 43,000 sessions. So we were averaging one and a half ses sessions per user. The bounce rate is if you're not on a page long enough to register, and then it doesn't count you as a user. Um, as we go forward, the how do I get rid of had a higher bounce rate, because people probably read the article, clicked on it, and didn't have something to look up. They just looked at it, and then they, they bounced back out. So. We were happy that's a pretty decent volume in a short amount of time. So the direct referral is someone typing in the SheboyganDPW.com. So we had about 7,000 people from there and another 7,000 from the Google searches. The M Facebook is people that are clicking on a Facebook ad from their phone or a tablet and not the desktop. So the phone was the number three referral source. The desktop for Facebook was number eight. So the most of the people are uh, on their phone or a tablet. Uh, WHBL, we had a pretty big spike. They did an article on the web page, and that drove up a lot of the quick clicks there. Um, the city web page, we got 218 people going from the city of Sheboygan web page and then clicking over to the DPW. Um, but we're developing our own audience and people are coming to our website on their own looking for garbage and recycling information. Um, again, with the more of the page views, the most popular one, and that's because we were in this program and pushing out was the garbage and recycling. The second slash is the home page. And then how do I get rid of, again, because of the recycling that we were pushing. Uh, the highest non-garbage was the park shelter and building rentals, and the rest was garbage. Um, the website does have uh, a feature where you can contact DPW, and it, through an email, we ask your name and your phone number, and then they can write in what their issue is. So we had 365 inquiries from those emails, 90 or 59 were from the park pages, but the majority of them were for garbage and recycling because of what was going on. So our social media ads, so we were getting, our top one was when we closed the parks for the COVID, that was over 30,000 people saw that. Um, the engagement means they did something, they liked it, they shared it, or they clicked on. But the click posts were quite a bit on that one where they went to our webpage after seeing it on the social media account. Um, so after five months, 1,300 followers on the Facebook page we're weekly reaching about 30,000 different users and then a cumulative of 193,000 people have seen our ads. And the top one was the closing of the facilities with the COVID for 30,000 people. So we were close to 2,000, 200,000 uh, uh, page views or looking at in the, the Facebook. Uh, the YouTube only had about 3,500 uh, views, but if you go to the video, same videos on the Facebook, that was almost 27,000. So the videos are getting a lot more traction on Facebook than they are on YouTube. We did boost one ad where we paid $50, and then over the course of the month, we started delivering carts in April, and we wanted this ad to get out that you may have gotten your cart early April, but don't put it down into the curb until May 4th. So we paid for this. Um, post engagement is 695. So it reached 5,000 people and then 695 either clicked on the link, they liked it, they shared it. So the ratio that Facebook uses 3.2 is average engagement with the post. We got around 12.6. So for $50, we reached an additional 5,000 people. So they could, hopefully they didn't put their card out prior to the start of the program. 
uh, the social media evening advertising. So you can look at the specific ad that we put out and how many people that it did reach. So we started the social media advertising in January, nearly from, driven 4,000 users to the site, and then the majority of them are new users. So the I can't read that far, but um, they were all garbage-related carts. So we got around 3,000 uh, clicks from that. And then and this is more of the social media advertising. So in four months of social media advertising, we reached 193,000 people. And of that 193, or 19,000 people, excuse me, and we saw over 200,000 impressions of them looking at different things from clicking. 301 new Facebook followers, another 5,000 clicks to the website. So we've done fairly well with the outreach. Um, the blogs that we've been writing, they haven't reached as much people, but we're still reaching quite a few. Um, we've been putting monthly blogs out about the carts and how to use it in recycling. So the top one was the 10 things to know about your garbage cart. Just some examples of the collateral that we sent out. You all should have received at your house. And then lastly, our phone calls. Hmm. So in 2019, and during quarter one, we took 4,890. In the first quarter of this year, we're 6,000. And the second quarter, we're up to 7,500 phone calls. So we've had a large volume of phone calls. They seem to die down a little bit. April, as the carts were being delivered in the first week, um, was the busiest. Some of the most common were when were the carts delivering, when does the program start, shredded paper, which I've added um, to the website, and then um, about the bags of the garbage, and then the, the weeks. The first two weeks was a little, little iffy. You know, a lot of people not putting out recycling when they should have, or people putting it out when they weren't supposed to, but that seemed to have catched up. So as a whole, I think the program has gone pretty successful. The amount of complaints has gone down. I think the compliance has gone up. Jason, I have to say that um, in the years that I've been involved with Public Works and that I think this is probably the biggest project, and I know I've said that in the past, because it touches every house, every home, basically. And it's, it's been, as an older, it's been a big concern for many, many years just because of the complaints of the, you know, the seagulls and the, the rodents and the, you know, little animals that rip the garbage apart at, at night and things. And I think, you know, looking at this, it's obviously a much safer opportunity, but it's also the fact that it makes a city look so much more organized and clean compared to what, in, you know, in the past. Um, I personally have not received um, actual complaints. I've had, you know, some people that are concerned about things, you know, my garbage cart's too big, or where do I put my garbage cart? And I know we will work through that, just like, you know, Director Beeble had talked about at one of the neighborhood association meetings, where you guys were, where the city was, you know, years ago. So I think we're making strides forward, everybody sees it, and, you know, like you've said, we're the second, we were the second last city in the state of Wisconsin. So when people hear that, they, it's kind of a slap because we don't want to be last. Right. We're not, we're just second last. But I think that you did a great job communicating it. It's unfortunate the COVID situation happened because you guys still continued to do a great job communicating even during this time. I, so I'm, you know, kudos to you and your team. So thank, thank you. Thank you. With the COVID, though, I don't have the exact numbers. I was going to look at them before I came. We're averaging about 20 tons extra a day. We're usually around 50 tons. Um, I know today I talked to I, the the lead. We had one truck collect 18 tons, just one truck, one route. But that's a holiday and COVID on top on top right. of that. But um, our numbers have um, skyrocketed quite a bit over the last month. And I'll I'm put sure. together some more data as we, I usually lag a week or two behind. But. Sure. I think some of that, and this is just my opinion, because people are home as businesses allow for curbside pickup, people are eating from the restaurant, but versus the restaurant disposing of it. Now right. we are meaning the community. Yeah. So right. that's an option there. And people are home and they're cleaning out 
stuff. Right. A lot of people yeah. uh, talk to my wife. Yeah. They're, they're cleaning house, spring cleaning kind of thing. And then you also have, you know, the, the joke of uh, people buying more online because they're home. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, great job. Any, any questions from the co uh, committee? No, I just, I, I would just echo I just it. Have a, I have a comment. Say that again. I'm sorry. Older person Philip, I have a comment. Yes, go ahead. I just thank you. I just wanted to say that I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised. I have not had any complaints or concerns, calls or emails from any of my constituents since this program launched. So that's really awesome. It is. Um, I I am a little concerned about the every other week recycling pickup. I think that's something we might have to reevaluate in the future. Um, me personally, and I have a family of five, and I we typically, and we're avid recyclers, and we usually we put out about 50% of it is trash and 50% of it is recycling. So I'm noticing already that my recycling bin is filling up faster than than I can keep up with the you know amount of times that it's getting picked up. So even though I am crushing all you know beer cans and soda cans, and even burning all of our paper, um, my bin is still filling up before two weeks. So that's um, just something I think you might have to keep an eye on. Yeah, I'll be curious to see how it is after people go back to work, also, and then the online shop shopping decreases, also. But yeah, um, the the. The every other week is the most common collection way that's used throughout the country. So we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes after these things settle down with that. Definitely. Home orders. Yeah, I know this is all very new and has to. Everything's going to need to be constantly reevaluated. But that's. I just wanted to raise that um, concern, and I think especially because we're trying to encourage people to recycle more you know and and they need to because they can fit a limited amount in their trash receptacle so if we see that increase as we expect to see in recycling i think that you know every other week may become an issue so i just wanted to just mention that this is this is ryan can i jump in and make a, a common question too yes go ahead awesome um i definitely agree with what rose said as well um, since the program has been uh, operating, I've uh, fielded a lot less questions and concerns from constituents, um, and I've been directing them to the website and uh, folks have been getting back to me saying, you know, that's been a great resource. Um, I guess I do have a question for Jason. Has there been ongoing complaints um, through this adjustment while people are figuring it out? I've no, I feel I feel that some some relative complaints too about oh, I, you know, I think it was windy the other day and. Some garbage cans like we're, we're blowing away I, I know there there's always growing pains but I you know are you seeing any patterns of, of complaints or questions that we're getting since we sort of been doing this for a few weeks now the, a lot of it was what day my recycling is um, that was the initial um, but no I it it's after the first week the, the amount of calls has dropped um, We've missed some stuff too, where we're going back out with the, we rerouted everything. Um, everything was routed where they could pick from both sides. So we did reroute um, and it, they, the drivers do have iPads that they're following, but we did have some routing issues where we missed a half a block Ooh. and such. But I mean, we were all doing that on the fly. Well, for the most part, I think we've gotten most of that straightened out. Uh, winter, it'll probably get real calm, and then winter will come around, and then it'll be the, a lot Spike of the same, same stuff. But um, <laughs> as far as stuff being knocked over, I've not had too many complaints with that, um, with the carts going. Okay, excellent. Any additional questions, Alder, Decker? I, I, just one quick uh, the only comment I had at the... Uh, the only problem that I questioned or comment that people had given to me was about the recycling schedule, the, the map. That could have maybe been a little more larger, more visible. That's the only thing that I I had a couple constituents, and I walked them through how to look it up online because that's one of the first things somebody called me up and said, my recycling didn't get picked up. And I'm like, well, what's your address? Mm -hmm. Well, this wasn't the week for your 
well, that map says and mm. so. But other than that, I think it's been yeah, it's been very positive. Doing a map of the entire city and trying to get it yeah. so it can be printed and distributed to the eighteen thousand cards. It was it, it was tough. Yeah. yeah, growing pains. Okay. Any additional questions from the committee? The person Savaglio has uh, a comment and a question. Go ahead. So my comment would directly echo uh, Alderperson Phillips' comments on the recycling. Uh, currently, my recycling bin is completely full, and my trash bin has a bag in it. Um, I, I would see that uh, being an issue in the future as we go along with this. Um, my question, though, is about the residents that have uh, steep inclines. I'm trying to find a, a good solution. Thomas, please wait. I'm on, I'm on a meeting. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's three residents in my district that have a very steep incline. I'm trying to figure out the best way for them to not, um, the best way to get the cart up and down their hill that's as tall as the cart and almost straight up and down. Um, and I would really appreciate um, some, some guidance from the city staff if uh, they could come and help me figure it out because uh, I don't want old people falling down and getting hurt trying to move these big cans or not so old people doing the same thing. Right, so uh, like, like I told your constituent, you know, if he was elderly and firm to contact me, he hasn't. I've got another constituent on Bluff who is 85 years old and I'm working out an arrangement with the driver. We'll have to get it and bring, bring that down. That's another alley where it's just way too narrow that we can't get. There's probably two locations where the alleys, we didn't go in the alleys with the old truck because it's, it's the old truck couldn't make the turns or get into, and the new trucks aren't going to do it at all. And they do have three or four steps that they have to get down. So, Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions from the committee? Hearing none, uh, we'll move to, thank you, Jason. Yep. Uh, we'll move to 4.1, which is our, our next meeting date is uh, June 9th, 2020. And then moving to 5.1, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Marcus? Alderperson Savaglio, vote aye. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> Alderperson Sorensen? Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Decker? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>